Today, I am going to walk you through the extra steps required to develop films requiring the ECN2 process. These films have a rimjet anti halation layer on them that must be removed before you can develop them. They cannot be developed at normal labs, so doing home development process is a must. And the results are amazing because these films are amazing. Hey team, my name is Will Cobb and I am a film photographer out on the central coast of California and I make all kinds of film photography and home developing and scanning videos like this one. If you want to learn more about film and developing, come along for the journey and let me be your teacher. I'm always answering your comments and Instagram DMs as fast as I can to help you with any questions you might have. So subscribe to this channel and show your appreciation with a little thumbs up. It goes a long way. And of course, before we get going, please write down in the comments any other developing techniques you want to see from me and we'll get to that as soon as I can. I definitely want to get to slide film eventually. And this one specifically today is one of my favorite types of film. So I'm excited that we're getting to the ECN2 process, this cinema film, it's awesome. So we are talking about developing this cinema film today. This film is one of my favorites to shoot with. I use the Kodak Vision 3 film in 50D, 250D and 500T, and they all have wonderful characteristics. If you love that look of cine still film, they're actually using this type of film with the halation layer removed uh, to get that glow. But if you like the colors and maybe you don't want that glow, this film is for you. To control that glow or halation, there's an anti halation layer on there, which is often called the rim jet. This is a layer of thick black something or other uh, that needs to be removed before developing. We have to get that rim jet layer removed before we can continue developing. And then after that, it's just our C41 chemicals that we've been using, like the Cine Still C41 kit or the Uni Color that I've talked about on this channel. If you are unfamiliar with developing C41 chemicals, I have a very in-depth developing video about that process that I will link above and below, and you should definitely go check that out because I'm gonna be talking about that specific part of this process very quickly in this video, but I have a full Full, almost hour long video talking about the entire C41 chemical developing set. So definitely go over there. It's going to talk about my kit, a lot of the whys of what we're doing, and it details everything out in depth. So definitely go check that out. So I actually bought a kit off of Etsy uh, of a guy that sells two rolls of each 500T, 250D, and 50D. And he also included the ECN2 pre-bath chemical in there. Um, the whole kit was really cheap. It came out to about $10 a roll, and this was really cheap too with it. Um, when you did the math on it, you can get these for like five or 10 bucks, really cheap, and uh, it'll last you a little while. So in this video today, we're actually gonna be talking about two ways to take the rim jet off. The first is gonna be with an actual pre-bath like this that we'll do before our bath, or we can use actual just baking soda, and I'll talk about both of these methods today. So it's not too much more difficult to add this. It only adds a step at the beginning of our process and at the end, and really it's just a rinse at the beginning, and at the end we make sure that all that rim jet is off before we scan. In your developing kit that I detail really well in that developing video, I'll also link all of the items down below for the my developing kit for you guys. We're gonna need to add just a couple more things we're gonna need to be adding. So we're gonna need to add our pre-bath in there and we're gonna need to add a tablespoon and we're gonna need to add a microfiber cloth for the very end, we're gonna do some wiping with that. Displayed here isn't my full kit. This is sort of the items I need specifically to be working on that extra step. Again, check out that other video if you wanna see the entire kit in there. Along with this kit, you'll need an extra chemical bottle to store your pre-bath when you mix it up. Before we get into developing, we need to load up our film and get them on the reels. Before we go into the dark bag, we need to get our film leader out of the canister. We do this by using a film leader retriever. It works by pulling the film out with a couple steps. I've shown this in a lot of my videos and I'll show it real quick here. You're gonna take your film and your film leader retriever you're going to put the entire thing of the film. You're gonna load all three of the tips in there. 
and go ahead and shove the first layer inside of there. And you're gonna turn counterclockwise several times and then you're gonna slowly go until you hear a click, click, push in the last one and give it a tug. And there's our leader. So this thing is invaluable. It gets our leader out so that we can cut it off here and load it onto our reels before we put it into the dark bag. It helps loading these onto the reels so much easier. So before we load up in our dark bag, we need to take our reels out and preload them. Today, I'm developing three rolls on this, on this giant tank. So I'm gonna take out my leader until it becomes flat. And I'm gonna take my rolls, find the ends right here where the balls are, just beyond the balls. I'm gonna go ahead and load up just a little bit until it catches on those balls and that one's ready to go. Inside the tank, we're gonna ratchet it on just like that. We'll pull out a little slack and ratchet it on. That motion looks like this. We're gonna cut our film right at the end of that. And now they're all loaded up to be ratcheted inside of the bag. And at the very end, we're gonna cut off those leaders. Inside the bag, we need to put our three reels, or however many reels you're using. Our tank with our center column. Do not forget the center column. And this is the bottom, don't forget that. And you need your light tight lid. I like to go ahead and assemble it to know that it's all together in there. And when we finish loading our reels, we put those onto the center column, close the light tight top, and then we can pull it out. Don't forget to put your scissors in there because you'll need to cut those leaders off. Zip it up and load it up. All right, now we can take it out. Our light tight lid is on there. Our scissors, and our empty rolls of film. We can put our dark bag away. Now let me tell you about the two methods you can do to remove the rim jet layer. We're gonna start with the bottle of pre-bath. So to use the pre-bath, we need to mix 300 milliliters of this to 700 milliliters of water, and that's gonna make a full liter for you. And we're gonna to need to do it in another liter bottle. I have an extra accordion bottle that I'm gonna use for this, and you can use pretty much any other bottle um, but you should use a dark bottle to keep it stored well. I'm not gonna show you mixing it because I've actually already have it mixed in here. Once you've mixed this up, it's ready to go and be heated up just like you do your chemicals to that 102 for your pre-bath. So this chemical actually is reusable like our other chemicals and you just pour it right back into this bottle. But it needs to be replenished every film roll you use. So we are gonna use the remaining replenisher in this bottle. I mixed up the replenisher in here, which it says to add 180 milliliters of the solution to 420 milliliters of distilled water, and that will make a 600 milliliter bottle of your replenisher. So after you're done using your pre-bath and you finished developing and all that, you need to add 20 milliliters of your replenisher to the main chemical per roll of film that you used and that will bring back up the power of this chemical for the next time. If you do this process, this thing should last for about 30 rolls of film and it should be stored for maybe two months or maybe three. I've had mine for a little while um, and it still seems to be working okay. So to use this pre-bath, it's really easy. You just take your pre-bath that you made, pour it all the way in, let it sit for 30 seconds and pour it out and then all you have to do is do your pre-bath like normal. After you pour it back in the bottle, you're gonna take your tank and go over to the sink and rinse it out with warm water until the water runs clear. You gotta do it until the water runs clear or that's gonna contaminate your C41 chemicals. So all of that black water that's coming out, all the red water that's coming out, that's all the rim jet washing off and getting your film ready to be developed. So keep doing that until it's perfectly clear. So that's the pre-bath. So the next option is to try baking soda. Now I've learned about this one recently and it does work, it's pretty awesome. So we're gonna take one tablespoon of baking soda to one liter of warm water and we're going to pour that in, shake up vigorously our tank for two minutes, dump that out into the sink and then we're also gonna rinse it just like the other one did until the water runs clear. Make sure your lid's on there tight. 
we're ready to start our C41 normal developing cycle. And we'll do one little step at the very end just to make sure all that rim jet is off. So I've got my sous vide going. I've got my chemicals ready to go. I'm gonna get started. Again, you can watch all of this in a very in-depth video linked below. Always start with gloving up. All right, and we'll start with the developer. A little bit of agitation at the beginning. Put that lid on there really well. All right, and I'm gonna start my inversion cycles. I'm going to go upside down and back up. This is a big tank. I need to wait a little bit longer on the upside down. I'm gonna do it four times with a little bit of a twist in between. And that's it, I'm gonna do that for 3.5 minutes. And then I'm gonna dump that back in the bottle to be reused. Now I'm gonna do the Blix for eight minutes. Make sure I keep my lids, my labels in the right places. Give it a little agitation to get started with. Put that lid on and I'm gonna do the same inversion cycles for every 30 seconds. Once the eight minutes are up, I'm gonna dump my Blix back into its bottle to be reused and I'm gonna go rinse the film. I can rinse this with the cap off because at that time it is light sensitive, it can be in the light again. And I'm just gonna rinse the film for three to five minutes doing several loads to get all of that developer off of there. And then I'm gonna use one of my favorite tricks, which is Photo Flow. Um, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos. It's a one to 200 milliliter solution that you make. I like to make it in a big jug, pour it liberally over the very last step. I use distilled water for the water and it is a agent that makes the water slide right off while it's drying. It's amazing, you should definitely use it. It has saved me so many times from getting bubbles on my film. It, I never get any bubbles or anything crazy going on with stuff left over on my films now. Here is where we add one more step to the process. Take out your reels and give them a few flicks to remove some of that photo flow, but keep some of that photo flow fresh in the tank or a bowl or something and hang the clips to dry. You may notice that there's still some black stuff on the film, that's just some leftover rim jet. We need to get that off before we're scanning. I never recommend wiping or squeezing your film dry because it can produce a fine particle that scratches the film. But in this case, we do need to get that off. So with our microfiber cloth, completely soak it in the photo flow solution and run it down the film to remove the last little bits of the rim jet. Keep rinsing it in clean water and wringing it out and then dipping it into the clean photo flow and then going back and forth until your rag is completely clear. You have to remove this all the way or it will cause some weird defects in your scanning. After you get your film all cleaned up, it needs to hang to dry for at least an hour to dry out completely so it doesn't stick to whatever you're gonna scan it with. Thoroughly clean your equipment because that rim jet gets on your equipment too. So scrub it really well and then lay it out to dry and you're good to go for the next session. Once it is dry, we are ready to scan and I've got a lot of great scanning videos. I've got a scanning video with the V600 and I'm getting into DSLR scanning. I've got a lot of talk about that setup. I've been using some really cool stuff recently. I've got my own film holder coming out. So please consider subscribing if you found value from this video, if you've learned from this video and comment down below if you have any questions. I'm always down to help out. And also comment if you wanna see any other types of developing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, maybe the scanning video. Peace guys.